Today on Believe 614, it's all about the filmmakers. We are visiting some of Ohio's up-and-coming filmmakers with a voice. Joseph Ponder, director, writer, and the co-authors of Bentley's Revenge and the crossover that won the game. Along with Dr. Johannes J. Christian, Pastor Emeritus of Adoration and Peace Baptist Church, and CEO of Face of Forgiveness LLC. They're sitting down to talk about their movie, The Crossover, that won the game. And take a sneak peek of a young filmmaker, Mariah Ward, a new short film called Untitled. Can you both introduce yourselves? Yes, I'm Joseph Ponder producer of the crossover the wonder game with my brother jamel ponder johannes christian uh, one of the actors in the movie so joe tell us how you came about this movie well i was in new york one day at my mother's house and i was writing a short story the crossover that won the game my brother seen it it's really about my brother and my family and he wanted to help me write the book we completed the book, turning about 300 pages. And one day I decided I was going to produce a movie. And that's just what I did. We produced the movie. Only thing about trying is leaving yourself an option to fail. Play ball. So tell us a little bit about the movie. Well, the movie is basically a story that teaches young people about perseverance, overcoming fear, understanding that failure is not the end of the road, but an opportunity for growth. It's a family-oriented movie. And what role do Dr. play? Dr. Christian plays a blind counselor. We also have Granville Waiters, the seven-foot tall brother with double-handed black Michael Jordan. We have Buster Douglas, the guy who knocked out Mike Tyson. We have Larry Jones, former NBA player slash Hall of Famer. And we have Clark Kellogg, former NBA player slash sports commentator. So how did you get everyone involved in this? Well, first of all, I have no fear. So I go to First Church of God Bible study every Tuesday morning. And somebody told me who Clark Kellogg was, who Larry Jones was. And I approached both of them about being in the movie. Then Bishop Mel Griffith introduced me to Jimmy Hayes, who introduced me to Buster Douglas, and from there everything just started coming into focus. So, what's the message in your movie? That failure is not the end of the road, but an opportunity for growth. Man, you a bomb. Yeah, you a bomb. No shame, don't even worry about it. The only way to beat your opponent is to own them. And how's uh, had any impact on any of your audience? Have you had feedback from the movie? Very good feedback. And one thing that a lot of people like about it is it's family oriented. And it shows that there are some fathers that are there for their children. One of the issues was the father wasn't there, but eventually he caught the message and he started trying to be in his child's life. And does uh, this, um can you tell us a little bit about how this movie reflects your own personal life? Not so much my life, but my little brother's life. The main character is Shay, which is actually my little brother's middle name. And he was the kid with the low self-esteem, the lack of confidence. I think dad can for my game, Ma. You are never there for him! But I support him! You have your money, he needs you! who didn't have a father figure in his life, so it really portrays his real life. And let's talk about Doctor's character. Doc, you want to tell him? Uh, well, I, first of all, um, believe that this movie just has an opportunity for uh, families to see uh, how they can best live together and uh, make life a 
pleasant journey. My part is a small part, but uh, I'm called upon to help to reunite uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ponder uh, after a falling out and he's been thrown out of the house. Uh, and trying to get them to focus on what it is that they needed to do to repair the relationship and get Mr. Ponder back into the house. So tell us a little bit about how, why you got involved in the movie. Uh, well, you know, I've known Joe uh, for a number of years now. And when he was first started the movie, uh, I had the opportunity to read the book. Um, I've been a single parent, helped to raise my own children, and so I'm always looking for an opportunity uh, to uh, do things that will influence young people. And so. I saw it as an opportunity to do just that. So, um, do you have any inspirational messages that you want to tell people about the movie? I believe that um, the movie uh, portrays uh, the kind of values that I believe we should have in our, in our lives. Uh, I think it fosters family love. I think it fosters positive uh, thinking, uh, it fosters self-esteem, and it makes room for the fact that uh, that life um, is greater than our, ourselves, and sometimes we're called upon to make really hard decisions, and I think that's uh, uh, the ending of the movie just really brings that home, that sometimes you have to make real hard decisions and, and make it in a positive way. So tell me um, about the crossover, uh, different, per, uh, some of the uh, actors, their characters, those kind of things. Right, we have some great actors from Columbus, Ohio. We have Chip Davis, who plays my father. We have Leslie, who plays my mother. Um, James Buster Douglas, he plays one of the main basketball coaches. We have Granville Wade as a seven foot tall girl who double handed black Michael Jordan in the NBA. He plays a high school coach and a college recruiter. You have Clark Kellogg, former NBA player. He plays a recruiter, a college recruiter. You have Larry Jones, who's a former NBA player, slash Hall of Famer. He plays a high school coach and an announcer. You have James Buster Douglas, the one who knocked out Iron Mike Tyson. He plays one of the main basketball coaches. You have Leslie Watts, who plays my mother in the movie. You have Chip Davis, who plays my father in the movie. You have DeWanda Reese, who's like a fill-in. You have Jessica Richardson, who plays a news reporter. Um, you have Angela Mitchell, who plays my secretary in the movie, and you have me who plays like, kind of like a grind ball role in the movie, a shyster. Quite a few actors, I can't remember all of their names, but a lot. So, why did you pick these particular actors? Well, Granville, he's just so smooth. So when I met him, I'm like, wow, he will be a perfect person in the movie. Clark Kellogg, he's extremely smooth, like Granville. And when I approached Clark, he said, well, Joe, you know, let's just pray about it. Two years later, he got back and says, you know, Joe, I'm gonna be in the movie. Buster Douglas is very laid back, and I knew he'd play a perfect role. Dr. Christian is real smooth, so, and he has character. So, most of these people I picked because I knew they had character, and I felt like they would bring out the best in the movie. So how long did it take from the concept of your movie to the end product? It probably took about a year, about a year. What are some of the challenges you kind of across oh putting that movie together? Um, a lot of the time the actors were so busy with the other shoes and so forth, they couldn't show up, which would like throw the whole set off. Um, and finances. We had a big problem um, coming up with the money, but by the grace of God, we was able to do it. And with the help of people like Dr. Christian, 
Mr. Butch Peel out of Wilmington. That really helped out a lot. And then I can't forget my brother, Jamel Ponder, who is also part of this movie, who produced it with me. He contributed a lot of money also. Okay, Doctor, can you tell me what made you get involved? Like, like some of the things that you've seen challenges for Joe? Well, I think I got involved because um, I had met Joe through another friend uh, because of his short stories. And I do a lot of public speaking and I like to give other people an opportunity. So uh, we uh, began to work on a project that I was doing in Lima, Ohio. And uh, he kept sharing about the movie and sharing about the movie. My intent was just to be somebody behind the scene. And so, uh, you know, I, I began to, to give him, you know, some little small amounts of money uh, as he would ask and, or, or talk about what he needed. Never dreamt it would be any more than that. And uh, the more I got involved with giving, I kept hearing more about the movie. And uh, again, I just believe in uplifting family and uh, anything that we can do to give a positive spin on our young folk and give them something to, uh, to look up to. And uh, the more I saw the movie and the more involved I got, um, it was just a given. And, uh, you know, um, he, Joe was really a compassionate person. And uh, I just felt like if he just could get over the to hump, so you know you just do what you're gonna do. And then, of course, I met Butch, and no way in the world I could match what uh, Mr. Peel was doing, you know. But uh, just wanted to be there for for John. I, I have um, had a lot of people help me to get where I am in life, and have had some great platforms to, to speak on nationally and internationally. But uh, I'll never forget that I never did any of that by myself. It's always been because people have seen something in me to push me to where I've gone. And I just want to be that kind of person to help push others in. At the moment, it happens to be Joe. He can probably tell you that sometimes my pushing comes with a, a heavy <laughs> price because I, I really push hard. He does. So is that uh, making you more creative by having someone like him pushing you? It does. It does. Consider him like a mentor? He's definitely a mentor. Yes, he is. And why that's important to you? Well, because a lot of times there's things I don't know that he teaches me. And I'm not one to get discouraged much, but I do have my moments and Doc is the one that will kind of like push me a little further, as well as Mr. Peel. So that extra push really helps me sometimes. So I'm gonna um, go circle back to your movie and let's touch on some of the, uh, you said you're working on another movie. Let's right. talk about that. Okay, so we're gonna be filming part two because when you see this movie, you'll notice that we left a nice cliffhanger. Okay. So you know it is movie number two. So we're gonna do part two here. We might do a part three. Um, and my desire is to shoot a movie of Dr. John J. Christian you know, his life story, and then me and Buster Douglas have been talking. So there's a movie that I created in my mind with Buster that I want to shoot. And then I write a lot of short stories. So with my short stories, I pretty much want to turn them into TV series. Like back in the days we had the after school special. So I write these short stories. He's confident, he's inspired, has a lot of ability, he's just a little raw. We might have something. Hold on, coach. Please don't tell me. You didn't. Yes, I had to. If you bring that cocky attitude, I will personally kick you out. Keep your mouth shut and your ears open. Everybody drop and give me 20 for speaking oh, out of line. Oh, oh, now! Hey, come on, Jay. My mom kicked my dad out last night. My dad used to always support me, but now he's never around anymore. Shay, you've got a ton of talent, and I'll be watching you this season. Good luck. Thank you. Hey, there he is, baby George. Is this a joke? I don't play JV, I play varsity. This is not fair! I'm sorry, Shay. I'm tired of Coach Scott. I quit.
You have to have a balance between discipline and positive reinforcement. That positive reinforcement is why other schools keep stealing our players. But you want us, me, to pay you money to entice this kid to come over and play with our team. Hey, what's Shay doing hanging around with those guys? They look like bad news. Come on, youngster, you in or you out? How much? Minimum bet, $10. I'm in. Why are you getting in here so late? And is that weird I smell on you? Oh, I know you are not about to leave Shay's first game. Look, he doesn't get in anyway. Mom, how can you admire me? I suck. <laughs> I'm 16 years old. You can't tell me who I can hang around. Now I see why dad left and hasn't come back. And the, the, the whole purpose for our being here is to see what we need to do to get Mr. Ponder back in the house. Talk to how y'all do it. Do what? Trust women. You're not so tough, are you? I see why you've been spending all this time with my son. You just want to beat me. Are you ready to give 100% to this family? Then he can come back. My body rejected the kidney. So what does that mean? It means that I have less than three months left to live. Your dad and I'm just returning your call. Um, yeah, I was in class. I'm gonna have to go back to work. Yeah, I won't be able to come home this weekend. They got me doing like three doubles. I don't know how you can do three doubles in two days, but uh, they got me working. And I need all the hours I can get. Um, yeah, so whenever I um, get the chance, I'll holler at you. Peace.
There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. Listen to me. I am captain of the track team. And if I'm late, she doesn't I'm really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? <gasps> wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Yeah. I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. Texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, 
she next to me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here. One Four Nation, and follow us for more videos, behind-the-scene footage, and your chance to win prizes at Believe614.com. How we coming? All right, then. I turn my city upside down. They want to see me up right now. I don't find my rhythm because I'm used to it. Matter of fact, the boy too groovy North side, baby, and it's all gravy You wanna bust the ghost, you know who to call, baby I'm a boss, baby, I don't have a boss payment You know the boss 80s, you might have to call Reagan Hey, hey, uh. Paparazzi rock a silver bag, that's where I come from I can show you how to get a bag if you want one Don't be nervous, ask if you want some Muscle in my veins, man, that's where I come from Shoot the footage, get my good sight You like me way better on my good side Every angle on it is a good sight I can show you what the real thing look like uh, Rhyme and reason, stop believing, not believe us that Do not believe in not a thing, but Rocky seasons Alex seasons, Samsung's Milky Way Steve Jobs must be God, how we live on IG live But when the phone died, then we die But I can show you how to get a bag if you want one We don't never get a phone tab where I come from we don't flash where I come from Money in the bank and the stash got a lonesome When you shoot the footage, get my good sight You like me way better on my good sight Every angle on it is a good sight I can show you what the real thing look like When you shoot the footage, get my good sight You like me way better on my good sight Every angle on it is a good sight I can show you what the real thing look like I turn my city up Believe 614 TV show and thank you to our sponsors.